Hi everyone, it's Jonathan with NimbleHost, and in this quick video I wanted to give you a short introduction to our Sentry stack for Rapweaver. So first off, I'm going to explain a couple of concepts on the whiteboard here, and then we're going to move over to my computer, and I'll go through a quick screen sharing session and show you how you can actually use a Sentry with your Rapweaver website. So as you can see here, I've got a you know very basic page layout, wireframe drawn here on the board. And you can see we've got uh, like a block of text here. Maybe this is an image. This little squiggle line here, let's say that's a Twitter feed. And maybe down here you've got a slideshow gallery of images. Well, Sentry is a container stack that holds other pieces of content. So let's say that this blue box here, that's a Sentry stack. And this uh, block of text is what you've been placing inside of the Sentry stack. And likewise for this image, the blue outline is the Sentry stack, and then the image that you put inside of Sentry, that's the content itself. Now the beauty with Sentry is that once you've finished your website and you've published it, you can then access your website remotely from any web browser anywhere in the world, and any of the content that you've placed inside of Sentry, you can control. You can remotely hide or display it um, even when you don't have access to Rapweaver. You simply log in directly to your website. You'll have some controls that pop up and you can toggle to hide or display any of the pieces of content that you have on the page inside of a Sentry stack. And you can have lots of content inside of a single Sentry stack. You can have multiple Sentry stacks on the page. They'll all show up. You'll all be able to edit how they are displayed. And so that, in a nutshell, is how the Sentry stack works. And I think you can see the possibilities and how you can use this with your website. Let's say, for example, the, the Twitter feed is broken. It's not showing anymore for some reason. And you've got this big blank block of space. Obviously, it'd be nice if you could hide that until you can figure out what the problem is. Or let's say that there's a typo in this block of text here. It's kind of embarrassing. You want to hide it until you can get back and fix it later. Those are all examples of how you can use Sentry with your RepWeaver website to control that even when you don't have access to RepWeaver. So hopefully that gives you a basic rundown of how Sentry works. Um, we'll run right on over to my computer and I'll show you how you can actually use it with your RepWeaver website. All right, well, we're here back at my computer and I've got a RepWeaver project file open. Uh, the official Sentry uh, demo site actually, or demo page. Uh, where you can see how we've set up uh, the Sentry stack. Um, and I'll show you the actual website itself here and how exactly you can log in. So you can see we have our Sentry stacks located here, and this particular Sentry stack is holding um, the masonry uh, slideshow, say design slideshow, and down here we have uh, a two-column stack, just a standard two-column stack, and I've placed the Sentry stack inside of both columns, and then I have just regular text stacks inside of those. You'll notice that these two Sentry stacks down here at the bottom have like a little warning note. It says, please enter account login details only once per page is necessary. You'll notice that the Sentry stack here at the top does not display that warning. And if we move over here to the Sentry configuration details, you can see that I've gone ahead and entered in the online account information that you'll use uh, or that you'll actually need to enter and use on your own website and you can see what I have set up here for the for the demo site for people to actually test drive how this works so as long as you have entered this information into the first century stack you have on the page you don't have to enter it on the ones below you can use that same online account information when you're logging in and you can see here the other Sentry configuration options. We've got uh, this main toggle switch here, which is allows you to hide or display the content. Um, and of course, if it's checked, it's going to display it. If it's unchecked, it's not going to display it. And beyond that, you can um, specify the exact time frame here uh, until a certain date, after a certain date, between two dates. And you'll have some dates here where you can uh, enter in the specific dates. Um, and you'll have, again, the format here is displayed. So uh, you'll, I think it's pretty self-explanatory, but the Y stands for year, the M stands for month, the D stands for day, the H is for hours, the M is for minutes, and the S is for seconds. So uh, let's say, for example, we wanted to do December 25th. We would do 2000 and 
14 and we do a hyphen and then 12 for the month another hyphen 25 for the day we have a space and let's say we want this to display at noon so we're going to do 12 colon and then we'll just use zeros to be exactly on noon and so that's the date format that you'll want to be using in both of these fields if you decide to use these features to specifically hide um, during specific dates or times. So that's a quick run through of the configuration and you can see how we, how we have everything laid out. Let's go ahead and take a look at the actual website itself. And I have it open here. I'm going to go ahead and refresh the page and make sure. And yep, you can see that we everything is showing up as per our settings in Rapid Weaver. We can and everything works just like you would expect it to. This is the masonry slideshow. A really great slideshow, by the way. And you can see we have our two columns of text right here. So when you're on your website here and you want to hide something or you want to adjust um, a setting with, with Sentry, how it's displaying things, in order to trigger the login window to display, uh, we have created a process that's very, very similar to what you may already be familiar with if you use a smartphone, and that is to tap and hold for, say, you know, a couple of seconds. And for example, on the iPhone, if you tap an icon on your screen and you hold it, then it'll start to wiggle and you can move things around, you can delete things. And we wanted to keep that familiarity when we created the Sentry stack. So let's, you can do this with a smartphone, with a tablet. Um, on a desktop, you're just going to click your mouse and hold it down. If you're on a tablet or a smartphone, you're going to tap and keep your finger pressed to the screen. So we're going to do that here. Um, you do have to do this process inside of a Sentry stack. So we've got three Sentry stacks here. We can't see them. They're, so, they're meant to be invisible. But I'll go ahead and click and hold here. And I'm continuing to press it hold down. And you'll see we have an indicator there. And up pops up the uh, login screen. So I'm going to go ahead and log in with our details that we entered into the Sentry stack in Rapid Weaver. And log in. And you'll see that the page is automatically reloaded. We've got a bar here at the top where we can do a quick preview and log out. You'll notice that the main content area has, has this overlay on top of it. And we've got these controls here for each individual Sentry, page, Sentry stack on the page. And we can individually control these. We can, I can click here to toggle and hide this, this masonry slideshow, for example. And if I want to preview it, I just click this preview button. And you can see it slides up out of the way. The overlay is kind of faded out, so you can see how it looks with the other content on the page. And then if I want to end that preview, I just click the end preview again, and it pops up just like that. But I want to keep this slideshow hidden for now. But let's say, for example, I wanted to do it only until a certain date, or after a certain date, or between two dates. And you can see we can adjust these settings um, here just like we had in the actual stack in RepWeaver itself. But I'm going to keep these uh, always hidden, or excuse me, always displayed. And I'm going to just hide these two text stacks just like this. Do a quick preview. And yeah, that looks like how I want it to be. So I'm going to go ahead and log out here just like that. And you can see, you know, we, we've logged out. We can see the page exactly as we want it to with those two text columns um, now hidden. So hopefully that gives you uh, a feeling for how you can use Sentry with your website. Um, but you may have a question. Well, what happens if we hide all the Sentry stacks on the page? How am I going to know where to click to display that login page? And that's a good question. So let's say, for example, we actually did that by mistake. I'm going to go ahead and log in here again. And we'll log in. And we're going to use these information details from before. And let's say that I hide this, or let's say, say, for example, it was displayed, but I had it until a certain date or after a certain date, and it's just not showing up anymore. Um, so now we have a completely blank page, and if we try and click on the page and bring up the, the login screen, nothing's happening. Well, how do we access the login screen now? Well, that's real simple. We go up here to the URL, and you'll see that after we log out, we've got this, this little snippet here. Uh, you know, it says question mark action log out. Well, if we just change this to question mark action log in, like so, 
then we get prompted with this login form and we can just log in just like before with those same details and we can now make changes to our website even though we couldn't access the Sentry stacks directly. So again, uh, if you're unable to get the login form to display just by clicking and holding or tapping and holding, um, that's not a problem. Just access the URL in your browser um, and you'll want to enter a question mark and then action and then login just like so. And when you do that, the login window will pop up, and that way you can be sure you can log into that page and make any changes that you need to, even if you're not able to actually trigger the login form using that, that process I've described. So hopefully that it gives you a, a quick rundown of how to use Sentry with your RepReaver website. And uh, yeah, we'll head on back to the camera now. So that wraps up this quick introduction video to our Sentry stack for RepReaver. If you have any questions or comments, please go down and let us know below, uh, or feel free to contact us via our website. would love to hear your thoughts and get any feedback on how we can further improve. So thanks again for watching, and we look forward to hearing from you.